This is the example problem from the auto cycle uh, presentation. It says an auto cycle with a compression ratio of 7. Uh, so we can say V2 over V1 is 7. Uh, begins its compression with a pressure of 96 kilopascals. No, sorry, 90 kilopascals. And temperature 15 degrees C. Uh, maximum cycle temperature is 1000, so we know that will occur at time 3. 1000 degrees C. Uh, utilizing air standard assumptions, we want to know the efficiency of this cycle doing constant and variable specific heat. So we'll do constant specific heat first. So we can say, uh, let's see, so we're looking for the efficiency. Maybe let's start there. Efficiency is going to be what we want, work out, over what it costs us, QN. If we look at the cycle, uh, maybe let's look on pressure versus volume. We're going to have isentropic compression from 1 to 2. For auto cycle, we've got constant volume heat addition. We've got Q in there. We've got S equals constant here. Now we're at 3. There's our 1,000 degrees. There's our isentropic expansion to 4, uh, constant volume heat rejection. Alright, so we can say uh, work out is going to be Q in minus Q out over Q in is our efficiency, and we can uh, divide by mass. We don't know anything about uh, the mass in the cylinder, but if we divide the top and bottom by the mass, we end up with Q in minus Q out uh, over Q in. This, uh, going from workout equals Q in minus Q out, is looking at uh, sort of the big picture view of our heat engine. What's happening is we have, we take heat, we produce some work from that, and the remainder is heat that we reject. And so from doing energy balance on this, we can see Q in minus Q out is work out. So, all right, we need to deal with little Q in, little Q out, and that's all we need. So Q in occurs between 2 to 3, and so let's go isolate the system at, uh, for the process 2 to 3 and see what we can get for Q in. Let's do a little space here. Um, so between 2 and 3, it's constant volume for auto cycle, and so it just looks like a rigid tank. Uh, we have Q in, um, and that's all. Right? There's no work being done. The system isn't changing volume. Uh, so energy balance for this would be, if I did it on a per unit mass basis, it would be positive Q in equals the change in energy of the system, which would be... U, and this is process 2 to 3, so U3 would be the final, minus U2 would be the initial. If I did it not per unit mass, I would have QN uh, is mass times U3 minus U2. Okay, um, but we're going to divide by mass because we don't know the mass, and we can get to the efficiency without knowing the mass. So that's what we've got. We need U3 and U2, and for air and ideal gas, uh, U3 and U2 only depend on the temperature. We have T3 over here, and so we can get U3, no problem. Uh, now we just need T2 in order to get U2. And we said the first way we're going to do this is with constant specific heats. And so if I have an ideal gas, um, from process 1 to 2, we said it was isentropic. So an ideal gas, isentropic process, assuming constant specific heats, there are four equations that apply. Uh, one of them is something like this, uh, maybe V1 over V2 
is uh, t2 over t1, maybe to the k minus 1. Let me take a look at it. You can find it in the summary of chapter 7 or the entropy formula reference sheet on the website. Let's see, so t2 over t1, oh, we need to do this one. t2 over t1 is v1 over v2. Uh, let's see, v1 over v2 to the k minus 1. Okay. All right, we're interested in solving for t2. So t2 is t1, 15 degrees, what's that, 2, uh, 88 Kelvin. V1 over V2, so let's be careful uh, which way we do that. So V, let's make sure this was right actually. P, uh, so V1 is the large one, V2 is the small one, so this is actually backwards. So V1 is larger than V2. So, so V1 over V2 is 7, so that's 7 to the k minus 1 uh, for air k is 1.4 so k minus 1 is 0.4 alright there's T2 let's calculate that Looks like 627.2 Kelvin. Um, T3, I said it was 1,000 degrees C, so that's 1273 Kelvin. So now we can go to table A17, look up U2, U3, that'll give us Q. So, table A17. Go ahead and approximate here. So 627 Kelvin, and we're looking for internal energy. Looks like it's uh, 450. I don't know, maybe 456. And 1273 Kelvin. Looks like. A little under a thousand. Uh, we'll go with nine ninety seven, nine ninety eight, maybe. We can interpolate those if we need it. Uh, all right, we've got Q in. Okay, so now let's get 